Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. And we get the back view of him. And I mean, it's just a mega. 52 yards is a long shot. Uh, Magnum P.I. is what yeah. we named him. No idea. Just but, a magnum. Yeah, just a magnum. Come on, Cam, last year we, we said probably 150, mid-150. Yeah. Same doe from the morning come out with that nine-pointer. Here, here steps out this 90-inch eight point. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Ah. I'm like, okay, well, there's still a buck back there grunting. Yeah. And then out steps like another 90-inch eight-pointer. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. You're like, I'm like, deer, right there. Yeah, like And he's 30 already yards. 30 yards. Yeah. He, he was literally five yards from the base of the tree. Could have been... I had a buck down at 1.40 in the afternoon back there deep on public. Three does come out pretty early. It was like 2.45, 24 yard shot, sent the combat veteran. And I tell you what, man, dude, it just smoked. We always get so jacked up when the other person kills. It's just almost like we got it done. Yeah. And when you kill that doe, I was like, hell yeah, man. And we come down here to Missouri. My ass called me one more time. I'm like, is it a good buck? And he goes, yeah, real good, solid buck. I'm like, all right, boom. <laughs> and the deer just drops for sure. Super special to me. Whitetail Legacy Podcast, bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. Baller rut. As season is now closed, it's time to start the process. A process that I've come to love. This is what I was meant to do. I was meant to chase giant bucks. Whether it's on private land or big public parcel, I was meant to be out there chasing. To get close to them bucks, it takes work. At the end of the day, it is fun for me. I know when I get back to the truck, I will think about the day and say that I'm ready to do it again tomorrow even though I know no matter how much work I put in, a return and investment is not promised. The thing that helps me the most is running trail cameras for the better part of the year. Before season, after season, there is always information and intel. And going back that way, catch them coming. Pretty good distance from our house, but uh, we woke up early, came down here. I wanted to just jump a giant out of a bed back here. and scattered hard. I found a really nice shed just right over here. But we got this tree out in the middle of this overgrown pasture. Gonna be a booner on this? Here we go, October 5th. Uh, back in on public. We're sitting over a sunflower field here. Um, Cody's had some good success here. Um, good encounters the last couple years. Uh, a couple years ago, I had a good mature buck come out in a uh, similar scenario that we got tonight with uh, the rain and such. So we're going to sit here and see if we can't uh, have kind of the same luck. October 12th, we're packed in deep here to public again, um, just short of a mile, really epic pack in, um, pulled a card this morning, got a really solid 9 and a really solid 10 coming back here, we're set up in the bedding, um, a lot of CRP back here, we're not in the tree that we come back here initially for, so we made a little adjustment, um, October cold front coming in about 40 degree drop so um, already had a doe come through this morning as we're setting up clearing shooting lanes and stuff um, October cold fronts man that's what we live for so we're gonna sit here and enjoy this one and see what we can do now that season is in and we have a few hunts under our belt with little success on our big public land bucks, it's back to the drawing board. Pull some cams and see what they're telling me. 
should I play the edge still, or is it one slipping up where I can go in and be successful? What do you do? Yeah. More of our style. October 13th, Illinois Youth Season. Out here on public again. We pulled a cam here over this active scrape that we found. And a buck that we call West Side has been frequenting it morning and evening. He was here about five days ago. Um, daylight in the middle of the day, so we know he's bedding here real close. Um, we're hoping that he's in this little thick bedding about 80 yards from us right now. We've got a good quartering wind. i um, thinking that maybe he has an advantage on us, but if we get action, it's going to be right on top of us. So we'll see what happens. Another hunt of playing the edge and no deer showed up. Uh, coming out here to public tonight. Got a little rainstorm blowing in. Um, we're going to go back deep into a spot, check a cam on the way that we haven't checked in about three weeks, but uh, they blocked our access. So we're gonna go to back up, back up plan B. Um, other trucks parked there, so we're on backup plan C. Uh, we haven't ever stepped foot in this this year. Uh, Cody noticed some buck sign in there last year. Uh, so we're just gonna go in there, do some um, scouting on the way in, find a good sign, and uh, set up and hunt. So. I'm gonna go cut a rug and get a good sitting. Another hunt, playing the edge and playing it safe, and no deer showed up. Hey guys, back in here to public. <coughs> We're on the west side, hunting the west side. Uh, we got in contact with another hunter. Had him on truck him two miles south, so I doubt he's gonna show up tonight. Didn't been staying for about an hour and a half, and uh, had the donor yearling come in, but was still just kind of getting set up, so didn't get a shot off at them. Um, the butt's on here, it's November 5th, so anything can happen. Uh, we got about 40 minutes of light left, and uh, hopefully it's time that shows up here before it's over. Right, we're back in here on public, way deep. Set up in the tree that we found earlier in the season. We said here one, one time all year. Seen four does and a spike buck. A lot of buck sign back here, a lot of action. Been seen back here. We know we got three shooters back here on cam. I'm in here, it's about 11.30, I'm set up. It's about a three quarter mile bike in and a three quarter mile hike with stands and sticks and all the camera gear. It's set up in this overgrown pasture right up in the center of it. It's November 8th. See what happens. The rut is now here and we have finally decided it is our time to go. No more playing the edge. We are going to go where we know we need to be and we are going to put in the work to make it happen.
yesterday didn't really see much. Uh, it's totally different this morning. We've been in here for about an hour and ten minutes. Already had a shooter come by, about 50. Um, working a doe hard, running a little other smaller buck off, a couple does. Uh, Bubba Clean 6 come in behind us on a couple does. Uh, we got a northeast wind, so if they work this pinch like we want them to, which none of them deer did, uh, we'll be good. So, a lot of action so far. Hopefully you can keep up and uh, we're going to sit in here all day again. So. With this public land closing early in the season, our chances were limited, and we played the edge way too much. We were afraid to be aggressive and bump our target bucks. At the end of the season, we realized that this was our biggest failure. It held us back from accomplishing our goals and ultimately our biggest public land buck ever. Next year, we are going to apply what we have learned and be more aggressive from opening day. If you would like to hear more about this hunt, or hunts from all across the country, including our fan favorite, Legends of the Woods series, be sure to check out our podcast on these following platforms. YouTube, Google Play, iTunes, TuneIn, Radio Public, Stitcher, Spotify, Podbean, iHeartRadio, Radio.com, SoundCloud, and Deezer.